Hello and welcome to the 14th Insight in the Baselight Beginner video series. Today we're going to stay on theme and continue discussing secondary grading within Baselight. So in the past two insights we've had a look at creating and tracking shapes. Now we're going to move on to selecting keys. In Baselight there's two keys that you can use, the D key or the Hue Angle key. And in this insight we're going to look at both try out some examples and you'll be able to see which one you might prefer or which one that you might use for certain situations. Let's get into it. Okay, so we've got three shots in the timeline here and for each of these shots, we're gonna look at creating either a hue angle or a D key to see what they're like, what the functionality is. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new grade layer with the keyboard shortcut P. If we travel up to the top right-hand corner of the parameters view, you can see that we're currently on the grade tab. If we swap to the mat tab, you can see that we have a lot of mat operators to select from, including the D key and the hue angle key. To start us off, let's have a look at the hue angle key. So I'm gonna go ahead, click this one here, and you can see that it's created a hue angle strip and a reference strip within our scene. To give us the maximum amount of real estate on our screen, we're gonna hide the layer mat operators. And let's take a look at the hue angle interface and what options we have. So over on the left hand side of the parameters view, you'll see three options that will be very familiar to colorists who are used to selecting keys. We've got our hue sliders, our saturation sliders, and our value sliders. So to put it plainly, we can adjust our color, saturation, and luminance selections here using these slider controls. Over on the right hand side of the parameters view, you can see that we've got some options that we can customize here. We've got some preset selections that we can select. And also we've got a visual representation of our key based on this color wheel and luma slider down the bottom. Now for this image, say that we want to select our actress's lips. We want to key her lips and put some crazy lipstick on or something like that. We want to change the color of her lips. The easiest way to do this with the hue angle key is not to start messing around with your sliders or playing around with your color wheel, but to make a selection, all you need to do is left click and drag over a portion of the image display. And you can see that our hue, saturation and value settings will adjust automatically. You can see this very visually on the color wheel. To check the selection we've made, we can toggle on overlays with the O key. And again, just like the shapes, you can toggle through these overlays using Shift O, and that will give you your different overlay options. So as you can see, everything that's green is being selected. So this is a very broad, not a very clean key. So I'm going to go ahead and left click over our lips again, just to see if we can get a cleaner selection here. That's good. So I did a very tiny selection to get this slightly cleaner key. So now that we've got our starting point, now it's a really great time to go over to our hue, saturation and value sliders and really finesse our key. So starting up at the hue sliders, and while I do this, keep an eye on the color wheel, just so you can see what's happening. I'm gonna adjust my key slider. As I drag this hue slider, you can see very clearly base light selecting the different hues as we go around the color wheel. In this overlay mode, the green parts of the image is the selection. So we wanna try and find a selection of hues that are getting the lips as green as possible, which is sort of right in the middle here. If we adjust the range, you can see that the breadth of our selection increases or decreases. So again, we want to keep this nice and targeted on the color of her lips. Also, we can adjust the roll off or the softness here. I'm going to leave that about there. You can make these adjustments with the saturations and value sliders to get a really finessed um, selection of your image. And you can also toggle any of these values on or off. So if you just wanted to get a luma key, you could go ahead and just grab a selection using the value controls. Again, if you just wanted to grab a saturation key or a hue key, you can do that without all of these three interfacing at once. So that can provide you with some flexibility. For now though, I'm gonna leave all of my sliders active and I'm gonna go and open up the mat operators again so that we can add our final touch to this key. Down below here, I'm gonna hit the edit mat tool. Using the mat tool operator, like we did to feather out our shapes in the previous insight, we can use all of these controls to further finesse our key. So in this case, if I just wanted to add a little bit of blur, I can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to toggle out of overlay mode using the O key, jump down to my grading layer, hop to my video grade and add some crazy colors so we can see what we've done. Obviously not the cleanest key. In this case, I might add a shape using the keyboard shortcut S, draw a freehand shape around her lips, and you can see we can isolate a 
cue angle key along with the shape to really restrict your selection. Hitting the O key, you can see that now just the lips have been targeted. And we could track this shape throughout the shot. Okay, so that's the hue angle key. Let's move along to the D key. So in a very similar way, we're gonna create a new grading layer using the keyboard shortcut P. We're gonna go up to the top right hand corner of the parameters view, go to our matte toggle and create our D key. As per the previous key, it creates a strip in our timeline and a reference strip in our scene. If we click on the reference strip and go up to the parameters view, you can see that the keys that we create automatically default to referencing the layer zero, so the original shot. Um, if you do want to change this, you can go ahead and change this here. If we wanted the key to point towards our first balancing strip, we can go ahead and change that there. I'll leave this on layer zero for now. Jumping down to the D key, you can see that we're presented with a slightly different interface. So let's talk through this. On the left-hand side of the parameters view, we've got a 3D color space viewer, which we can manipulate using the middle mouse button, clicking and dragging. We can also zoom in and out of this viewer with command, middle mouse button, drag to the right and left. On the right, you can see that we have some volume parameters, which are currently grayed out. This is because we haven't made any selections on the image yet. So navigating to our image, let's say that we want to select this actress's blue dress. To do that, we're going to click and drag over her dress, and we'll also toggle the overlays on using the O key on the keyboard. As you can see, by clicking and dragging on the image, we've made a selection by creating a color volume within our 3D color space. Now we can create as many volumes as we like. So I can go ahead and click another part of her dress and another part and another part. And you can see that every time I do this, we create another volume. These color volumes are represented visually in this 3D color space view. And if I zoom in on this, you can see that we can view this volume dynamically within the 3D color space. In the base light manual, these volumes are referred to as sausages, which you know is a very apt description of what they are, I guess. Um, but what we can do with the volume parameters, we can actually adjust these, which as you can see in the image display, adjusts our target selection. We can adjust the start and the end offset. I'm gonna reset this here. We can also adjust the radius or the thickness of the sausage, which as you can see, has an effect on our image. And we can also adjust the roll off of our volume here. Now, what makes this tool really cool is you can adjust this per volume. So if we go up to our selected volume dropdown menu, we can go to each of the volume, each of the selections that we made and adjust these parameters. I'm gonna go up to our menu and select our volume four. You can remove volumes that you've created using the remove volume button. So if I toggle through here, you can see that we're deleting each volume as we go. But also if you've made a selection that's too broad and you want to refine it, you can shift click and that will subtract the selection from your key. So you can see as I'm shift clicking here, we are creating volumes that are subtracting our selection. If we want to remove subtractive or additive color volumes to our selection, we can go ahead and just remove these volumes here. One of the great benefits of using the D key is that we could go ahead and make a selection on a specific hue. Say for example, the blue of her dress here. We can go ahead and shift click the walls, get this selection a little bit better. Now say that we also wanted to select uh, the slightly pinky red bag on the desk. Using the hue angle key, we'd probably struggle to get these blue tones and these pinky red tones isolated in the same key cleanly. But with the D key, because each of your color volumes are separate entities, we can go ahead and click and drag. And you can see that we've added the pinky hue to our blue key without any problems at all. Just like the hue angle key and any of these matte operators, we can edit this matte tool and we can blur our key, we can erode and dilate our key, and we can start to uh, really finesse our selection here. If we whack on a crazy video grade, uh, you can see we haven't got the best selection here, uh, but we are doing secondary grading. Uh, we are isolating parts of the image and we're applying a grade using the D key. And that's it guys, uh, that is the D key and the hue angle key within Baselight. I hope that was a really good introduction and you sort of understand the differences between the two keys. Um, the D key for me is a little bit more complex, but it allows for um, more complex selections. Whereas the hue angle key may be a little bit more simplistic, again, gives you sort of a chunk of the color wheel, um, but 
very easy to understand and to manipulate those controls. Um, I definitely find that the D key uh, volume parameters are a little bit more abstract for me, but manipulating the hue angle key parameters is nice and easy. So have a play with both. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For mixinglight.com, I'm Luke Ross.